Hello there. It's been a long time since I have done a virtual journal club. And recently, American College of Rheumatology published guidelines on management of glucocorticoid induced osteoporosis. So I thought, why not do a journal club? We know that glucocorticoid induced osteoporosis is a common problem. It affects a lot of patients and at least 10% of those patients fracture on long-term steroids. And roughly three to four times as many patients develop radiological fractures that are not clinically apparent. Most of this bone loss occurs within the first three months. And unfortunately, risk calculators such as FRAX may underestimate the risk of glucocorticoid induced osteoporosis, primarily because the risk is essentially non-linear. For instance, if somebody is taking 10 mg of a steroid and some other person is taking 5 mg, the second one doesn't have half the risk. The relationship is not necessarily linear. So our first job is to find out what risk category our patient is in. So ACR guidelines do a good job of getting patients into basically three major risk categories, low fracture risk, moderate fracture risk and high fracture risk. Of course, this categorization begins with the patient's age, whether the patient is older than 40 years or younger than 40 years. Let's focus on patients younger than 40 years at first. Only those with a prior osteoporotic fracture are considered high fracture risk. All others have either moderate fracture risk or low fracture risk. Those without any risk factors other than glucocorticoid treatment are considered to be having low fracture risk. And who are those in the moderate fracture risk? Hip or spine bone mineral density less than minus 3. That is people who have low bone mass or rapidly losing bone on steroids, they are considered to have moderate fracture risk. If you look at patients older than 40 years of age, of course having prior osteoporotic fracture, very low bone mass or rapidly losing bone are considered to have high fracture risk. The important thing to remember here is that the FRAX adjusted risk that is 10 year risk of major osteoporotic fracture or 10 year risk of hip fracture has to be adjusted upwards for the use of glucocorticoids. Glucocorticoid use increases the risk of major fracture, major osteoporotic fracture by relatively 15% and hip fracture by relatively 20%. So this factor has to be added in to the risk that is output from FRAX. So in moderate fracture risk, FRAX between 10 to 19% major osteoporotic risk and between 1 to 3% risk of hip fracture. And low fracture risk is those who have 10 year risk less than 10% for major osteoporotic fracture and less than 1% for hip fracture. So this risk stratification is based on age, BMD, history of fracture and 10 year risk. We know that steroid therapy more than 7.5 mg per day can up the risk of hip fracture by around 20% and major osteoporotic fracture by 15%. Unfortunately, we do not have any tools to estimate the fracture risk in children or adults less than 40 years who are on long-term steroids, primarily because there are no long-term studies to inform us of this risk. Apart from steroid therapy itself, there are other patient-related factors that must be taken into account. These include malnutrition, low body weight or significant weight loss, hypogonadism, secondary hyperparathyroidism, thyroid disease, family history of hip fracture and history of alcohol use or smoking. These are all the usual suspects we routinely ask for in managing patients with steroid induced osteoporosis. Now after this history, we go for a clinical examination where we assess the patient's weight. We know that low weight is a risk factor, height without footwear, an assessment of muscle strength which is a proxy for frailty. We know that frail people are more likely to fall and therefore fracture their bones. And we also look for signs of any inapparent fractures such as spinal tenderness, bony deformities and reduced space between lower lips, lower ribs and upper pelvis. So this is the initial assessment of patients. 
all patients whether they are children or adults should be clinically assessed within 6 months of starting steroid therapy if the patient is a child no further initial assessment is needed if the patient is less than 40 years with risk factors then a bmd is required otherwise it's not and for patients older than 40 years a frasc scoring preferably with bmd is required within 6 months of starting therapy the crux of this algorithm is that all patients have to be evaluated within 6 months of starting therapy and those with risk factors need to get a bone mineral density assessed by dexa scan now that we have assessed the patient we will go to management initial management for all adults taking prednisolone at a dose of 2.5 mg per day for more than or equal to 3 months so you have to focus here on the numbers 2.5 not 7.5 and optimize calcium intake optimize vitamin d intake and lifestyle modifications such as balanced diet maintaining weight in the recommended range smoking cessation regular weight bearing or resistance training exercise limiting to alcohol in, limiting alcohol intake to 1 to 2 alcoholic beverages per day in this context it is better to prefer dietary calcium over calcium supplementation in the form of tablets because of the possible increased risk for cardiovascular events later on so all adults more than or equal to 40 years at low risk of fracture the management is essentially the same optimize calcium vitamin d and lifestyle for those at moderate risk of fracture or high risk of fracture calcium vitamin d and lifestyle modifications alone do not suffice we need to add bisphosphonates whether oral or iv is the question acr guidelines recommend adding oral bisphosphonates because of its better safety profile and because there is no data to suggest that iv bisphosphonates give any additional benefit on the other hand if oral bisphosphonates are not an appropriate choice these four drugs can be given in decreasing order of preference iv bisphosphonate deriparatide denosumab it is important to remember denosumab does not have safety data in patients who are treated with immunosuppressants and raloxifene only in postmenopausal women in whom none of the other drugs are appropriate or available so basically it boils down to adding bisphosphonate when there is when the patient is in moderate or high risk as i said previously there is hardly any difference between management of patients with moderate risk of fracture and high risk of fracture and you don't need to specifically go for iv bisphosphonate just because the patient is in high risk these patients are also treated with oral bisphosphonates so what about uh, adults less than 40 years of age the management is roughly the same calcium vitamin d lifestyle modifications these form the background on which further therapy is added and those with higher risk that is moderate to high risk of fracture addition of oral bisphosphonate is needed if you look at the guidelines there is hardly any difference between those who are younger than 40 years or older than 40 years as long as they have the same risk category low risk category no need for bisphosphonate moderate or high risk oral bisphosphonates are preferred if oral bisphosphonates are not appropriate then one of the other four classes of drugs can be given so this is the uh, treatment summary calcium vitamin d and lifestyle modifications as i said previously form the background if patient is found to have low risk no further treatment is required if the patient is having moderate or high risk then further treatment is required then you need to ask whether the whether it's a woman of child bearing potential who is not planning pregnancy during period of osteo anti osteoporotic treatment in that case treatment with oral bisphosphonate is given for men and women not of child bearing potential once again treating with oral bisphosphonate is given let's look at some special populations adults with organ transplant those with uh, gfr of more than or equal to 30 ml per minute no metabolic bone disease and who continue to take glucocorticoids 
should be treated according to age related guidelines for those who have not had any transplant plus having a transplant means they need to be evaluated by an expert in metabolic bone diseases and denosumab has to be avoided children aged 4 to 17 years treated with glucocorticoids for more than or equal to 3 months optimize calcium vitamin d and lifestyle modifications if necessary children aged 4 to 17 years with an osteoporotic fracture who were continuing treatment with glucocorticoids at a dose of 0.1 mg per kg per day for more than 3 months then on top of the background of calcium vitamin d and lifestyle modification bisphosphonates have to be added so the only reason to add bisphosphonate in children is a proven osteoporotic fracture and high dose of steroid intake so how do we follow up these patients on uh, glucocorticoids for prevention and treatment of osteoporosis so this is how we reassess once we pay once we put the patient on treatment clinical fracture risk reassessment has to be done every year every 12 months for children no additional reassessment other than clinical fracture reassessment that is the follow up is essentially only clinical in children for adults less than 40 years without risk factors there is no need to do a bmd testing this is similar to the first assessment and for adults less than 40 years with risk factors then we need to do a bmd testing once in every 2 to 3 years for adults more than or equal to 40 years who have never been treated with an anti osteoporotic medication even then they need to undergo dexa scan every 1 to 3 years and during anti osteoporotic therapy if the patient is taking very high dose of glucocorticoids or history of osteoporotic fracture at least 18 months after starting the anti osteoporotic treatment or poor medication adherence or other op risk factors then we need to advise dexa scan every 2 to 3 years otherwise we don't need a bmd testing for those who do not have adverse risk factors even on bisphosphonates they don't need bmd testing and those who have completed anti osteoporotic therapy bmd testing has to be done every 2 to 3 years to summarize if there are risk factors then adults less than 40 years need to undergo a dexa scan adults more than 40 years if there are no risk factors there is no need for a repeat bmd otherwise a bmd needs to be done every 2 to 3 years so follow up of special cases adults aged more than 40 years continuing glucocorticoid treatment who have had fracture that occurs at least 18 months after treatment with an oral bisphosphonate or who have had a significant loss of bone mineral density that is either an or a patient who is fracturing on oral bisphosphonate or losing bone in spite of bisphosphonate therapy then treatment with teriparatide or denosumab is indicated iv bisphosphonate can be used even for patients who can continue to develop fracture on oral bisphosphonates if we suspect absorption is a problem adults older than 40 years who have completed 5 years of oral bisphosphonates and who continue glucocorticoid treatment and are assessed to be at moderate to high risk of fracture continue active treatment or switch to another class so what this means is if a patient is taking anti osteoporotic therapy for 5 years and even after the 5 years the patient is continuing to be in the moderate to high risk category we need to continue bisphosphonates and not stop adults aged more than 40 years taking anti osteoporotic medication in addition to calcium vitamin d who continue glucocorticoid treatment who discontinue glucocorticoid treatment and are assessed to be at low risk so this is the opposite of the previous slide so in such cases we can discontinue anti osteoporotic therapy but calcium and vitamin d has to be continued adults aged more than 40 years taking anti osteoporotic therapy and who discontinue glucocorticoid therapy and are assessed to be at moderate high risk in these cases 
we need to go ahead and complete the treatment with anti osteoporotic medication whatever the class of medication the patient is taking so that sort of completes the guidelines it's a simple small guidelines it has some limitations such as many clinical scenarios are not addressed in the guidelines primarily due to lack of data another important thing to remember is frax uses hip bone marrow density but glucocorticoids use has a greater impact on spine bmd and therefore we may underestimate the risk by using a frax lack of glucocorticoid induced osteoporotic uh, osteoporosis specific trials especially in the younger population impedes development of any guidelines or recommendations the guideline ends by suggesting areas for future research these include differences in risk in people with different risk factors such as age race sex role of vertebral fracture assessment in dexa or radiography and impact of no treatment versus some treatment on adult bone health and fracture risk in glucocorticoid treated children so we do not as of it as of now no whether no treatment itself is an option for steroid treated children but to summarize all patients on glucocorticoids should be assessed within the first 6 months for fracture risk the assessment can be clinical for everyone with or without dexa for some high risk categories risk stratification is the key an adjustment of frax risk for glucocorticoid use must be done optimizing calcium vitamin d and lifestyle is the background therapy for all patients of steroid induced osteoporosis for prevention as well as treatment oral bisphosphonates are the preferred treatment when pharmacological management is indicated and follow up has to be done every year during which we reassess the fracture risk and continue the same loop thank you